In this video I'm going to show you how to make the slick selection menu with almost no code and just in a couple minutes. So let's get started. First off make a new 3D project and call it whatever you like. Now wait for it to load. Forever, forever, forever. One eternity later. Now that it finally opened, go to the download link in the description and drag the package that you find there inside your project. Import everything that we have in here. You should see the same exact view that I have right now on the screen. Let's rotate the camera a bit so we have a better view of our scene and the cars that we will use. So to explain how this works is basically we will have a car holder and underneath it we will store a bunch of 3D car models. So the selection process will go like this. We will deactivate all the cars when we press the button and we will activate just one that fits our number. In this way we will make sure that only the car that we need will be active on the screen. Don't worry about the weird placement. This will actually help us in our animation later on. I also made the menu manager canvas that I stored underneath the UI object and there you will find two buttons. Next car and previous car and it's pretty obvious what they will do. This is how they will look on the screen. But enough chit chat, let's get this thing to work. Create a new folder for your scripts and inside place a new c -sharp script called car selection. Then attach it to your car holder game object. Open your script and inside place two methods. One private method called select car and one public method called change car. They both will take in two integer arguments. Inside the select car method write a for loop. It will process through all the child objects of the current transform and it will activate only the one that we need. Next up we need a way to change our current car. And to do that we will need an integer variable. Every time a button is pressed we will change this variable by the parameter that we receive inside the change car method. And then immediately use the select car method to activate the car that we need. Now we can finally make our buttons work and test. Go back into Unity and find our next car and previous car buttons. Place the car holder inside both buttons and select the change car method. For the next car button set the parameter at 1, for the previous car set it to minus 1. Now press play and see if it works. You're gonna have to find the car in the scene view because for now it's not centered and you can't actually see it in the game view. But when you press the buttons you see that it actually works, except a small problem. And that's the fact that we are allowed to press the previous button even when we are on the first car and the next button when we are on the last car. To solve this problem we need to control when our buttons are enabled and disabled. Go back to our script and declare two new button variables, one called previous button and another one called next button. Also let's make them serializable. Go back into Unity and put each button in its correct place. Now back to our code and we will write these two lines which will make the previous button disabled when you are on the first car and the next button disabled when you are on the last car. This will allow you to use this script for any number of vehicles and it will work correctly. One last thing before we are done with this code, let's make sure that every time on awake we activate the first car. And now when you go back into Unity you will see that actually when you start the game the first car will be active. And the previous arrow will be disabled. And when you reach the last car the next arrow will be disabled as well. Now let's put the cherry on a cake, add some animation and sounds and let's finish this thing. First off we're gonna make a new script called car animation and we are going to attach it to all of our cars. Also while you have all the cars selected, attach an audio source to it so we can play the sound that we need. You can use the sound that I put in the audio folder or import another one. Just make sure to drop it in the audio clip field of every audio source. Now open the car animation script. In here we will use three runtime methods, awake, update and on disable. We will also need a vector free called initial position, which will be equal to the off screen position where we placed our cars. What we actually do here is basically teleport the cars off screen once we disable them. The last thing that we have to do is move the cars to the center of the screen. 
one vector called final position that we can tweak from Unity, and a line of code inside update that will make our transform move towards its final position. The 0.1 value that I put in here is actually the speed of a movement, which you can customize to your liking. Now when you go back into Unity and actually select the car, you will see a final position vector which is 0, 0, 0 because we haven't assigned it. But let's press play anyway and see what happens. So obviously what we need to do here is tweak the final position of a car so none of this weird stuff happens inside the game. So I found that all the cars work well with one on the Y axis. The bus works well with 0 on the y-axis and the jeep works well with 1.5. But feel free to experiment and change anything you want, just don't forget to drag the cars off screen when you're done. This is what the final result looks like. Congratulations, you've made a selection menu in Unity. You've learned how to loop through all the child game objects of a transform and activate the one you want. And finally, how to put an animation and a cool sound effect on it. You can use this same concept for multiple purposes like level selection, character selection, item selection. Feel free to adjust and tweak and improvise. And that's the end of it. Thanks a lot for watching, it really means a lot to me and I hope you learned something useful today. Stay safe and keep making games. games.